for the shot, and he scores! And he drives it in, walking in, he shoots and scores! Mustangs, draw first one! It's racing, it's a show, and he scores! 4-4! Oh. <laughs> Lachlan going to the net, shoots, and he scores! And towards Cox, goes to the shot away, Davis makes the save, no, it's in! It's in, first over the lead! Live from O'Brien Group Arena in Melbourne, this is AIHL TV. The regular season is brought to you by Air Canada, who offer the only daily and non-stop service to Vancouver. For details, visit aircanada.com.au. Owners. Owners are a direct infrastructure investor with a portfolio worth in excess of $50 billion. ATC Productions, your live event technical provider. And APA Group, delivering Australia's energy. It's derby time here, the Melbourne Derby between the Melbourne Ice and the Melbourne Mustangs from O'Brien Group Arena. It is 7th v 6th on the ladder. It's the second last week of the season. Believe it or not, even last week, we would have thought this would be a dead rubber. No, it's not. It's a live game in terms of final sale calculations for not only the Mustangs in 6th place, but the Melbourne Ice in 7th. Both teams can technically still make the finals. It's a, that's the way this season is. This wacky season could be set up for a wacky conclusion, but for these two sides, it's an absolute must win, or I think they can pretty much end any dreams of making the finals. My name's Michael Clough, and I'm joined in current day by Steve White. Welcome, Steve. Thanks, Mike. And uh, yes, as you quite rightly pointed out, it's still uh, September is still beckons for both of these two teams, obviously providing on the result tonight. And they also both have a game against the Perth Thunder who have come to town after a week off and are thrashing by the Sydney Bears two weeks ago and who are also looking to stay in the finals race, currently sitting in third. And, yeah, I mean, I haven't... You know, the eight years we've been doing this, I think this is the closest I've seen the league ever. As we yes. take, take a look at the AIHL ladder, at the start of week 17, the CBR Brave, no-one's going to catch them on top points. The Sydney Bears they only need two more points to clinch second. They're sitting on 45 points. No one would have picked that at the start of the year. Perth Thunder, they're in third. They come to town tomorrow to face both of these two teams on Saturday and Sunday on 38 points. The Dogs on 35, equal with the North Stars, who played the Sydney Bears up in Sydney tonight. And then you have the Mustangs and Ice on 33 and 29, respectively. So the Mustangs win tonight, and the Newcastle North Stars don't win, or they only get the one point in the shootout. The Mustangs will go at least equal or leapfrog them. Into fourth? Then, yep, and if the, the Ice win, they go to 32. Then they obviously they have to win against the Perth Thunder on Sunday. They have to win all their games. Yeah. They've got no buffer. They've got to win all their games and, and hope that got... the North Stars and the, um, and, the, and the Dogs in particular keep digging that hole. They keep finding themselves in right and then, now. And as we said, the Ice, they've got the CBR Brave in the last two weeks of the season. So they've probably arguably got the biggest hill to climb. Still, It's still surmountable if they want. But the Mustangs out of the two here tonight probably have the better chance of uh, causing a late season upset appearance if you want to put it in those terms and for the Mustangs I mean they've beat the CBR Brave twice this season so you know they finished fourth yeah I don't think the CBR Brave would want to meet the Mustangs in the finals because yeah. whatever however they're structured they seem to match up well against the dominant team in the league and I reckon if it's CBR Brave I'm going to throw it out there depending on what their motivations are they might say if if Melbourne Ice has to get six points out of this weekend yeah. anyway for it to be they might say you know what We'd rather play the Melbourne Ice. Yeah. So we might not send... If we've got any blokes a bit banged up at home or not not uh, alluding that they would do anything to throw a game or anything, but they might say, well, we'd be happy for the Melbourne Ice to, to knock us off over the, the weekend and actually pull off the miracles we reckon come final time. We can ram it up to a level and blow them off the ice. Yeah, well, it's a possibility. I mean, with the Mustangs, I was talking to Max uh, earlier in the week and he was, you know, he said, we've got nothing to lose at this stage of the season. We win tonight. And it's on like Donkey Kong, basically. So they have to obviously get past the Thunder as well, who are just, as I said hung earlier, hungry to get those points. But as I said, it will come down, I think, regardless of what happens tonight, it's still going to come down to the last week of the season to decide who's there. Absolutely. Um, particularly, you know, with the North Stars and, the, and Sydney Ice Dogs, who both seem to be staying in the hunt despite massive losing streaks. I mean, both sets of fans and obviously teams would be greatly frustrated with that. So, but it makes it ha the most interesting season in years. So it does. And you mentioned um, with Max Perot saying they've got nothing. I think Melbourne Ice got nothing. To do. That may make this game really interesting. Not only you get the pressure of a derby game, and um, usually gets a lot of the hockey world's attention, particularly here in Melbourne. Uh, but you've got two teams 
they've still got a chance that they can play with a nothing to lose attitude, which might really open this game up and, and make it a very, very exciting contest. Well, absolutely. And I mean, if you look at the head to head record, I mean, the three derbies we've had this year one win, one loss, and then the shootout win um, for the Melbourne Ice. So, look, it's, it's any. It's, you couldn't have it more even than that, really. I mean, so it's anyone's game here tonight. We know derbies are the, the Melbourne Derby is the hottest ticket on the AIHL ladder. And, you know, we're not trying to say that with any Melbourne bias. Um, but, you know, from a, from a, a crowd, yeah, cr viewership, every, energy, anything. Like, it's a spectacle meltdown from people on Facebook. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, there's always that, too. But, uh, look, I, it's going to be fireworks. I mean, the last uh, derby, I thought, out of the three that have been played so far, where it's probably the flattest, wasn't the, the best game of hockey. I've, I've already forgotten it, to be honest. Well, of course, <laughs> the, yeah, the, the Melbourne Ice are too is strong. But the first, first two this year were fantastic. I mean, the Mustangs obviously took the first one. But uh, this one, I... It, it's the most to play for, so I'd expect uh, fireworks nonetheless. Looks like we're going to be moments away from uh, the national anthem being sung in this one. The teams take their formations, but we've got a good crowd in tonight and uh, a lot of sport happening in Melbourne tonight. Big game in the AFL. We've got the, the NRL as well, so it's good to see plenty of, po uh, people, plenty of people here at the hockey to watch the two Melbourne sides at it playing for their season. Direct your attention to the front of the scorer's box and welcome Maureen Black, president of Ice Hockey Victoria, to the ice for the ceremonial puck drop. Can the two captains please come forward? Thank you very much, Maureen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be upstanding and remove your hats for the singing of the national anthem. Performing the anthem tonight is Kelly Cupo. Australians all there. Both teams go in their final huddles ahead of the final Melbourne Derby for season 2018 as the Ice's home game. They're the team in the blue, the Mustangs, the team in the white and the orange. Well, for these sides, finals still a mathematical possibility and a realistic possibility because um, helped by the fact that two teams above them, being the North Stars and the, the, the Sydney Ice Dogs, have just dug themselves a massive hole and haven't been able to clinch and they've left the door open for these two Melbourne sides. You never know, we could still have a final series here in Melbourne with a Melbourne team. Yeah, and look, I mean, those, as I said, we talked about the Ice Dogs and North Stars. I can't believe you know, they haven't been able to put those games away. I mean, the Dogs had that unbelievable game against the Canberra CBR Brave last week. 11-8. And, and then lost to the Melbourne Ice the night after. So... I mean, it all to play for here tonight. Your starting goaltenders for this evening's game, Alexi Toivonen for the Mustangs. Ten games played, six, three, and one in the shootout. Save percentage of .877. And for the Melbourne Ice, Jade Pine Murphy getting the nod. Eight games played, one, five, record in starting, and .905 save percentage. So the wins haven't been there for Pine Murphy, but the save percentage is good, and I thought he was good last weekend. Certainly, um, I was up there to see the, see the game against the uh, Sydney Bears, and I don't think the result was any reflection on Jaden Pine-Murphy at all. No, and, and also he, uh, I mean, uh, 
was I going to say? Sorry. His words escape me, but, but he's had quite the roller coaster season. I mean, he came in the team, left, and then James Downey came in. Now he's gone back to Canada. So it'll be interesting to see how uh, JPM goes tonight here in this final derby. Well, goaltending has not been the Melbourne Ice's real issue this season. There's been a lot of problems up front that's been the cause of their current seventh place position on the ladder. But the opening face-off is won by the Mustangs. So McCoy. In the neutral zone. Fleming. Well, just a bit of a blind pass in the end. By Murphy will glove that one. We'll have a face-off. So standing room only crowd here this this evening here in Melbourne. Uh, Ginsburg tournament on as well just before this. Uh, great to see the up and coming junior talent on display here at the O'Brien Group Arena as Davies takes the face off now here for the Mustangs, being one of the best players for the team in orange, red and black this season. Here's Corbett, fires one now here to Fleming at centre ice, right, down the far side, slips it down. Here's Powell in over the circle, Powell moves Toivon in from out of his crease and he just can't find daylight between the goalpost and Alexi Toivonen's pad. That was better for the Mustangs defence, but absolutely sublime from Powell. Here's Davies the other way, he shoots and he puts that over the shoulder of Jaden Pine Murphy. Powell now puts the puck in before he gets the shoulder into the glass and the Melbourne Ice take the opportunity to change personnel. Here's Michael McMahon in contention for Defenseman of the Year in terms of the AIHL awards, which will be announced in the next week or so. Here's Ferguson now around the goals. Ferguson almost lost the puck, did so in the end, and is picked up here by Chris Wong. Chips it out down the near side, but gets away from him and onto the stick here of Andrew Wurzen. And his pass finds its way through. Here's Brendan McDowell. McDowell slips it back. Here's a trailer. Burke, he shoots, and he scores! First blood to the Mustangs. It's Jamie Burke, and it's 1-0. Well, beautiful setup there by the Mustangs. Uh, in the end, caught Pye Murphy, I think, well out of position. They, they got him moving. They stretched the pass, stretched the Melbourne Ice defence. And really, if you can play like Jamie Burke with that much space to play with, is always dangerous. And he made no mistake. Well, it looks like when Marcus Wong went down to block, he partially screened him. So, you know, but Jamie Burke, as we've seen so many times, can just find that scoring touch. Seventh goal of the year, and it's one nothing to the Melbourne Mustangs. Early um, breakthrough for the Mustangs. Kalishnikovs. Now Jones finds Vadim Vyasov. We'll hopefully send that one in the corner as Armstrong takes a tumble. To Crow. He's corralled by Matt Anderson. Well, backhanded pass. Been turned over. Chance for Anderson. He goes out wide towards Vyasov. And a pad save there by Pine Murphy. Kalishnikov shoots and scores! The Mustangs take an early 2 0 lead. And the knuckleball succeeds. Man, just like that. Inside two minutes into the first period. And the key to Kalashnikovs, this is his fourth goal of the year. Let's have a look at this again. Just a, a real, just flung that on net, really. Not a clean shot by any stretch of the imagination. It didn't matter, because that goes past Jaden Pine Murphy. And as I was saying, he wasn't that bad last week. Um, I'd have to say that goal was certainly on him, and the other one, he was caught out of position. So the Mustangs jump out to a 2-0 lead. 13-10 is the check on McCoy. Hoddick throwing his weight around. As Ferguson gathers the puck in, fires it up to Pat O'Kane. As Davies joins him with an equal amount of speed in the opposite corner. Davies gets upended there. Play continues. A quick shot at Ferguson looking for number three. And uh, just denied there from Pine Murphy. That's a confidence building save after those two concessions. Puck chipped up now in towards Delsar. It's picked up now here by the ice. Clark gets stripped of it there by McCoy. who just shovels that back out to the neutral zone. And Carpenter will work it back now here to the captain, Liam Webster, out to the blue line. Clark just elects to feather it in to the Mustangs defensive zone. Picking it up now is Ferguson on the back check. Looking for Burke with the saucer pass. Can't find him. It goes all the way through to Pine Murphy and on now to Todd Graham. The hulking six foot four frame of Todd Graham gets put into the glass, but gets the puck out now here to Declan Bronte and on now here to Powell, who chips it back to Corbett. Just couldn't get a clean touch. Hurds and ends up with the puck and back to Hurds uh, to Burke by Humphreys. Humphreys shoots, good save from Pine Murphy, and he makes sure of it. Well, Steve, you said you talked to Max Brod during the week and that they had an attitude of nothing to lose. They've got a sniff at the finals, and that's why they're coming out and playing. They're playing like a team that believes, even from their current position, that they can give, they can play finals. 
they, they, they feel like they're legitimately in the hunt. That's why they've come out. This, this is great stuff from the Mustangs. And as we've said all season, this is the best Mustangs team on paper, talent-wise, I've seen. And I think a lot of the people around the league I agree. agree with you. It says that's shot in front, a loose puck. And the ice touch it, and then they're going to get the first penalty of the game. Slash the call. And I believe Todd Graham, the offender. And the Mustangs, well, this is not the start that the Melbourne Ice wanted at all as they are 2-0 down, and now they'll be a man down as well. A great chance now for the Mustangs to put the Melbourne Ice to the sword. And it'll be interesting to see what the must, my ice coaching staff do if they do concede another one in the next few minutes in terms of goaltending or calling a timeout. So face off, the Mustangs have it. Anderson at the point. That's what's Vyasov. He's corralled. And drop pass out towards Kalushnikovs. It's finding space a little bit too easily. Pass, I think, was just on the wrong side there of uh, Davies, I think it was. Now Vyasov, he's bumped off the puck. Now it's Jones to Vyasov. And the ice are able to clear now through Armstrong. Armstrong tied up. Hartsfield's free and Klushnikov skates onto it. Just cycles back, allows the Mustangs to make a line change. Klushnikov using his size to protect the puck. He's forced out wide, little backhander pass. One corner and the other, Anderson should get there first. Good work though by Fleming. So Ferguson, assessing his options. Klushnikov shoots, behind Murphy with the save. And the eyes are able to clear. Now Fleming for the ice. Happy to just skate into the corner, protect the puck. Eat up some penalty kill time. Goes back out towards Carpenter. Couldn't trap it. Here's a chance now for the Mustangs. Berg's already got one goal. Goes for another. Shot was wide. Kept in by Davies. Ferguson. Pass back out towards Davies. Who overskates it. Gets the puck back. We'll go back to the point out towards McMahon. McMahon there looking for the tip. Still the Mustangs in control of the puck. And pass looking for a cane, but a defensive stick got in the way and uh, just clears the area. And Toivonen finally pressed into action. So the Ice are able to kill the penalty, but uh, the Mustangs looked very dangerous. So Ferguson had to cycle back. Goes to Tris Pass, misses its intended target. No icing call though. So Nathan Kachi, one of the impressive youngsters from the Melbourne Ice this year. He's forced back as well. Wong will leave that for Crow. To Crow. Crosses the blue line. Puck found its way between Chris Wong and Armstrong. Armstrong was tripped, but no call. I thought it was a pretty clear one. A little backhand attempt by Wong. In Nets. fact, have we got the call now? Net's dislodged. Net is dislodged, so we'll have a face off. So it's, it's all one-way traffic here at the moment. Let's have a look at this. Yeah, pretty clear trip there. Matt Armstrong unlucky not to get a penalty. But the Mustangs has a two-goal advantage shortly into this game. And, well, they have come out swinging. But as we always talked about between these two teams, and has been the story of the Melbourne Ice and the Mustangs. It's the third period that matters. So plenty of hockey between now and then. I mean, so many games we've seen one team leading. Usually it's the Ice that have fallen apart. It's, in it's the been the fatal flaw for both sides yeah. this season, the third period, particularly the Melbourne Ice. So here's the draw in the Mustangs defensive zone. Picked up now here by Robertson. He just pulls up, backhands this one off the dasher, and Humphreys can't take it cleanly. Bronte can and uh, he's forced to retreat as this one chip now up to Humphreys goes past him all the way back now here to Pine Murphy Bronte with pace puts it back out to Graham Clark can't clear the zone Robertson holds it in rides the check there of Hoddick and the Mustangs have it here deep back down with a backhand shot and that goes wide on now here to Apps for the Mustangs Apps now drawing the attention of the ice defense slips this one in now to McDowell who draws some attention of his own Humphreys did well to evade the check and get it behind the net. There's a bit scrappy in there behind the goal line, but it comes right out now to Humphreys with a backhand shot, and Pine Murphy makes a save and finally makes sure of the rebound. 
Well, defensively at the moment, Melbourne Ice are falling apart, it should be said. Uh, they're not looking particularly impressive, but remember, you can get your tweets on screen tonight. Just use the hashtag AHL Game Day. would love to get your thoughts. We should also mention another game in progress right now up there in Sydney, the North Stars and Bears, which obviously has ramifications on tonight's result here. So Mustangs with the shot and Pine Murphy forced into action again. It came off his pads, but along the half wall, but the Melbourne Ice are clear. Pass out towards Fleming. Nice little hook there, and he's going to get away with it. So the referees are putting the, the whistle away so far. Now Davies. Just flips up, lovely pass out towards Ferguson. Looking for Davies again. Just couldn't get a stick to it. He's brought down. The play will go on. So Webster goes for the Hail Mary. So McMahon. Backhanded pass. Looking for Davies. He was onside. Ferguson. Little back pass and a shot is wide by O'Kane. But again, the Melbourne Ice defence has been exposed. So Ferguson goes out wide again. The shot was too high. Anderson out wide. Out towards Glushnikovs. Finds Crow. Putting on the afterburner was Chris Wong, but he skated himself into trouble. Met a wall in uh, Matt Anderson. Glushnikovs again. Happy to concede some territory. The Mustangs are able to clear. The Yasov will get there first. Past the centre ice, only as far as Crow. Finds Armstrong. Trying to work his way through heavy traffic. Jones with a good body work, but uh, Melbourne Ice get the puck back. As Wong will send that one into the corner. Toivonen. Now Jones. Is able to clear. Hoddick. And Clark and uh, Armstrong had to get themselves back on side. So we've got about six and a half minutes remaining in this period. And I don't think we've had a shot yet from the Melbourne Ice. Mustangs already have two goals. Jones of oh, fans on the pass slash shot. Here come the Melbourne Ice Crow. Out towards Powell. Fires, shoots, and Toivonen is finally forced to make a save. Yeah, Alexi Toivonen out to challenge that shot at the top of the crease. Good work. But uh, the ice, that was their best attacking drive of the period so far. And Tommy Powell, the man you see on screen, one of the few shining lights for them this season, as we say, the game this morning between the two Melbourne teams. Can't wait. Yes, morning, depending on where you are around the world. Thanks, Ben. As 6.21 remaining here in the first. And if you just tune in, a 2 nothing lead to the Melbourne Ice. Uh, sorry, the Melbourne Mustangs. Well, I've had some few hearts in mouths. And uh, Bronte and Humphreys collided there at the inside the blue line. A good check there. Here's Burke with Humphreys. Burke in over the line. Uses the defenseman as a screen. Shoots and scores! Goal number two for Jamie Burke. And it's 3 nothing Mustangs. I think it's, I'm sure the, um, they're going to have to make a change in net. Well, at least unfortunately that was not a if you're a goaltender that's not a pretty one to give away there wasn't really much muscle on that shot at all but he did as he did use the, the defenseman as a screen ego there's bronte yeah that's that's pretty smart play there from but from jeremy burke but as you're right Jaden pine murphy had most of that but not enough of it and jamie burke i mean he missed about eight games due to suspension earlier in the season but since he's rejoined the mustangs midway through he has been on fire and he's going to be a key player if they're going to push towards um, an unlikely, fin unlikely finals berth. So Davies. Davies just skates out of the zone a little too easily in the end. Pass out wide. This nice set up for the Mustangs. In the end, Davies just couldn't get a deflection that he wanted. Vyasov. Tied up in the corner. Carpenter up against Davies. Vyasov's there in support. Puck spills free. Vyasov gets it. Just walks in, shoots. Puck spills free again. So Clark attempted a drop pass, wasn't particularly successful. Webster couldn't connect. And at the moment, it's all the Mustangs as Hoddick goes from a tight angle shot, basically behind the, the net. Shot by Webster was too high. Clark into the corner, head towards Delsar. And a couple of Mustangs could have raffled that one. Robertson goes out wide. Here's oh. a chance now for Anderson. Just couldn't connect. So there's time to recover and get the puck. 
And eventually Anderson has lost it. Clark should be able to clear, but only as far as Vyasov. Wrong with the stick lift. And the pass has been intercepted by Armstrong. At the moment, the predominant Melbourne Ice crowd being the Melbourne Ice home game is very quiet at the moment yeah, with what hear, they're saying. You can hear a pin drop here. So Crow, Armstrong couldn't get there. Josh Velez, he'll wait for everyone to get back on side. Now Marcus Wong, out towards Velez looking for Armstrong. And pass was ambitious to come unstuck. Here comes McCoy. McCoy driving towards the net, shoots and scores! Jack McCoy, of all people, puts the Mustangs 4-0 in front. Oh, man. That's got to be a career highlight for Jack McCoy, doesn't it? It's the first goal of the season for Jack McCoy. And, man, he looked like he'd scored 30 with an effort like that. 4 nothing Mustangs. And as you quite rightly mentioned, Mike gets a goaltending change. In comes Mikey James. JPM coming off the ice. Beautiful shot there from Jack McCoy. And I'm sure uh, his father, Ken, the ice tech here at the O'Brien Group Arena, will be... Uh, proud of that one or maybe not he'll probably pull him down a peg now just kidding <laughs> but uh ihv blackhawks uh, rep to jack mccoy his first goal of the season and the mustangs well it's all one-way traffic at the moment for nothing seven points on the year for jack mccoy six of them assists that's his first goal and we've got a penalty and it looks like oh as uh, Mitch Humphreys lays a pretty good hit there on the, on the Grange Phillips the linesman. And he's uh, he's <laughs> getting it from Todd Graham as well as he skates off. But uh, Todd Graham going to the penalty box now. And, well, it just gets bad to worse here for the Melbourne Ice in the first period. That's the second power play they've conceded. And the second penalty to uh, Todd, Graham. Todd Graham as well. So we see here's Bronte. Yeah, well, he's lighting him up from uh, interference to call yeah. there. Yeah. And it's just... It's <laughs> The penalty didn't need to give away either. This is a frustrating thing. So the Mustangs are on the power play. And a chance to really rub some salt in the Melbourne Ison's wounds. So Toivonen gets it out towards Matt Armstrong. So Armstrong gets it out. Now towards Vyasov. He'll take the blue line. Has plenty of support, but unfortunately loses the puck. And then he's tied up by Bronte. Now Fleming. Pass was a good one, and the ice should be able to clear now through Crow. Just a cut into the middle lane. Kick down, good work there by Crow. Intercepted the pass. They'll have to go with a backhander and just clear it out of the zone. And allow both sides to make line changes. So Burke, he's already got two goals, looking for a hat trick. Burke. Just stops, has plenty of time to work with, gets a shot away, and James off his pad. Because I think Burke would be looking to be the second Mustang of the season on top of my head that would, um, uh, the, in fact, <laughs> <laughs> well. The Grange Phillips had checked Mitch yeah. Humphreys, not the other way around. My apologies. Don't worry, that's a. Uh, but I think Sean Jones got a hat trick in the first period in their first game of yes, the season. Yeah, he did. And, uh, <laughs> well, Grange didn't like it the last time I called him out for that. So <laughs> two, two of the best there, but anyway. Play continues, slapped out and held in there by Davies. Put back in behind the goal line. And the Mustangs, Ferguson, one timer from Burke, and it was about half a metre to the right of Mikey James. As the Mustangs have this through Davies, just uh, waiting for an option to present itself. It does in the form of Brett Ferguson with McMahon on the other point. Ferguson just uh, pulls up, and the Mustangs can take their sweet time, considering they have a four goal commanding lead here in only the first period. Davies to Mokane in the slot and a good save from James, but uh, looked like it may have took a deflection before it got to James. It puts into the corner now. Here's Burke. Back behind the net to Davies. Burke, O'Kane setting up in front of the net, and that's flung the length of the ice, and Toivonen forced to touch it as it was on net. McMahon going to gather it back in, and Graham gets ready to step back on the ice as we're back to five-on-five five hockey. Zero for two on the power play tonight are the Mustangs, but it doesn't matter at this stage because they have a four-goal lead. Ferguson points to Vyasov now. Vyasov draws a couple of Melbourne Ice players to him. One of them, Del Sar, puts almost puts him in the glass, put himself into the boards in the end. Graham wraps his man up. The Ice trying to clear their zone as Kroll steal here. Now here's Vyasov off to Humphreys. Vyasov with a shot, and he blazes away high. 
And, well, that almost trickled out into the near side post. And the Mustangs all over the Melbourne ice here in this first period. Robertson just inside the blue line, flings one on it, nothing doing. Graham, nice outlet pass. Here's Delsar on the breakaway. Delsar looking for a shot. Oh, and he... Erzin got the stick up. And are we going to have a penalty? Indeed we are. Andrew Erzin. Well, Erzin disputes it. That was interesting on the replay. Looked like it was a stick lift. Maybe not. We'll get another look at it. And so it was a good back check there from Erzin. Here's the replay. Yeah, that's, well, a, that's, actually, a, yeah. that's a good play. Yeah, stick lift. Yeah, a very good one, actually. It's a very good play from Andrew Erzin. He's got a case there. Oh, well. Melbourne Ice with a gift. And yeah, it's been one of the success stories for the Mustangs this year. It's been very good. Very, very good. And I'm actually very happy for him. One of the good guys in Australian hockey. Good to see him finding some success now with the Mustangs. But the Melbourne Ice with a power play, and uh, they need a goal now out of this power play like you wouldn't believe. Now Fleming. Gets out towards Crow, back towards Graham. Managed to evade the hit, but has turned the puck over. Here's a chance now for Ferguson. Humphreys in support. Pass was just on the wrong side of him. So Crow gets it out towards Scott Corbett. Scott Corbett well, left it for Crow. He wasn't um, really part of the play in the end. Graham just fans on a continuing his dirty first period. So Fleming back out towards Graham. Now Powell. Graham again just over his stick. Pass out towards Fleming. Another out wide towards Corbett. Just throws it on net and that hit the pipe. That hit the bottom of the pipe. That's, that's like the um, ice hockey equivalent hitting the bottom of the stumps and the bell's not coming off that one. Now Powell fires, shoots. Getting the rebound just on the wrong side of Devin Crow. Now when I still in control, Webster. One last chance before the period ends. But that shot was blocked by Davies. That's the end of a first period that was completely and utterly dominated by the Melbourne Mustangs. They lead 4-0. And the ice will be glad to hear the horn. That was uh, domination there from the Mustangs. Jamie Burke leading it with two goals. And, well, uh, what is the response going to be from the Melbourne ice? Jaden Pine Murphy chased in the end. Mikey James in. And, well, what do the coach, Melbourne ice coaching staff have? to get them back into this fourth and final Melbourne Derby. We'll soon find out, but we'll wrap things up at the end of the first period. It's 4-0 in favour of the Melbourne Mustangs over the Melbourne Ice. We'll back shortly with a second period of play.
Hi, Andy here. Welcome to Ultimate You. I want to share with you how you could be one of the lucky few to lose 9 kgs or more in six weeks or less absolutely free. Maybe you know someone who's done the challenge before or perhaps you've just seen one of the thousands of before and after photos online. Come and meet us down at the info session where we're going to teach you some mind-blowing stuff and transform their life for good. I'll see you soon. From the makers of the best SUVs for today comes an SUV for the future. Diesel fuel efficiency has ample spaces for the growing family. The future ready brand new Mazda CX-8 diesel coming soon. So my name is Renee Hallinan. I'm a Melbourne girl living in, in Adelaide and playing netball for the Adelaide Thunderbirds and have been part of the Australian Netball Diamonds now for five or six years. I've been to two Commonwealth Games and have a silver medal and at the most recent ones a gold medal. Throughout my career one of the things that I've probably had the biggest problems with is sleep and for me falling asleep as an athlete. I'm always critiquing performances, always looking back at the trainings and I have to be a morning person. Um, three mornings a week we're up at 5.30 and, and on the training track by 6am so for me it's about when you do get in there having that quality sleep and I feel like the temper mattress allows me to do that. I, when I was in Tempo, got to try out a lot of the mattresses and went with the original Breeze. One, because it was a bit firmer than some of the other mattresses, but it also contours to your body, which was, to me, incredible that a mattress could do that, but certainly something that could help me. And also my fiance, Jo, is an athlete as well, so when we're in the bed together and not being able to feel one another moving around, certainly have not been disappointed. I'm going to touch wood and say that I haven't had the massive um, knee injuries and things that a lot of netballers have had, but I've had all of the stress injuries, so through your feet, through your shins, lower back problems. Now that I've got the temper mattress, I've realised what a difference a good mattress can make to me and my performance, and I think the temper mattress is giving me, I'm feeling alive and energised and ready to go again and excited to get into bed at night to have that good night's sleep. It's like winning that gold medal in Glasgow last year. That feeling of relief and your whole body just feeling free. That's like my temper mattress.
Well, Mustangs absolutely dominated the first period. They lead the Melbourne Eyes 4-0 in the final Melbourne Derby of season 2018. Uh, Steve, do the what? Do the Eyes have anything they can bring to the table in the second period? I'm just flabbergasted what I saw in the first period. Well, they do, but they've just dug themselves a huge hole. Uh, I mean, they've got to take it one shift at a time to borrow an old hockey cliche, but look, the Mustangs keep playing the way they're playing. It's, the, I, you know, don't want to write them off right now. I mean, we've seen stranger things happen in this league, particularly, you know, last weekend in Canberra and the Sydney Ice Dogs where it eventually was 6-6. When does next season start? Learn from the mistakes and adapt. No team should go from champs to chump in one season. Well, that's, uh, you know, that's a fair call. Uh, Absolutely. Fair call, at, particularly with it. Does anyone get the feeling Melbourne Ice are taking a dive so a Melbourne team has a chance at finals? Well, uh, credit to the Mustangs. They played brilliant hockey. And if that, they bring these hockey for the next two, couple of weeks, they'll be a, a, a real threat come finals time if they qualify. Yeah. But they've got to maintain it. And that's been one of the um, the issues for the Mustangs this season, uh, the, the inability to do it for three straight periods in a game. But now the Melbourne Ice, they're on the power play to start the uh, second period. So they got a chance to at least uh, get one on the board. So Graham well from a tight angle to the slot, but nobody was home. Now for Yosov, bringing out his soccer skills, clears it away and a chance now for the Mustangs. And Humphrey just couldn't weave his way through. Now Powell, a little drop pass out towards Crow. Crow back to Graham the point and the Mustangs have killed the penalty. So McMahon for the Mustangs. The Humphreys, he's forced out wide. We'll stop and wait for support. Goes in the corner where Vyasov should get there first, and he does. Along the half, all sent into the corner. Vyasov trying to swoop on it. Has it now. A little backhand of passes. A good one. Nice chance now for the Mustangs. Leonid Zanders, I think, couldn't capitalise. Puck's been turned over. A chance for the veteran in Corbett. He'll drive towards the net, gets a shot away. And that's uh, one of the rare good opportunities for the ice we've seen so far tonight. Pass misses Webster. That's going to be a foot race. James will come out of his crease, play along the boards, take the safe option. Graham looking for Velez, misses him. Along the half wall, Mustangs are able to clear again. And now Webster for the ice. Finds Armstrong. Wong. It's there towards Carpenter. Couldn't get a shot. Well, should have got a shot away a bit early in that, but the, the delay in the improved deadly. And that's probably a summary of the game so far. The Mustangs are very sharp and very alert tonight. They are indeed. And uh, the, the ice really in that first period only had probably two quality chances to get on the board. And uh, the Mustangs, well, they had plenty and they took their chances. They also had the... Uh, two power plays that the ice conceded but the Mustangs conceded one of their own the ice didn't take advantage of that and obviously the penalty to worse and that's going to be icing as Webster's going to beat everyone back and we'll have a face off to the right of Alexi Toivonen. We haven't seen too much because the ice did have the power play to start off with one area that they've got to really work on is that the low slot Mustangs it was almost training run stuff at times they just had so much time to have a bloke to sit there try to get a clean shot away they've really got to put a bit more pressure in that area of the ice. Indeed, here's Webster's drive, and that one was blocked in the slot, and it's backhanded out. Webster beats Burke to the puck and puts it in front of the penalty box. Burke slaps it right back in front of the Mustangs bench. McDowell takes over and dumps this one into the corner for Lazzarotto to go and give chase to. 12.38 to go here in frame number two of this final Melbourne Derby for season 2018. As uh, well, that one goes over as Burke goes down. And play continues. This one put into the center ice face-off circle as Burke loses his edge. McDowell flings the puck right in. And the ice looked to counter-attack and capitalize on that change. Armstrong just couldn't take that pass cleanly. And his chip behind the net now here to Jack McCoy. You know, for the first time this season, I will say, the last goal scorer from moments ago is Anderson over the line. Anderson, nice move. Anderson walking in, shooting. Oh, it's loose in front. They score. Goal number five, Vadim Vyasov. And it's uh, almost as, well, I don't want to say it as certainty now, but the, the hole just keeps getting deeper for the Melbourne Ice. Well, big, uh, big smiles of the Mustangs bench. They, you've got to enjoy this if you're a Mustangs oh, fan. Oh, absolutely. Mustangs player, but, again, I, I don't want to sound like I'm being 
any way critical or anything about the players, but Matt Anderson, again, not a player that should be able to be allowed to skate in like that. Yeah. You're, still, you're more your stay-at-home defenseman, McCoy, Anderson. They're just they're pinching and skating in yeah. and getting passes and shots away far too easily. Yeah, it's, it's a bit of a training run at the moment. So Vyasov. And in the end, I think it might have been Jones was offside, but... Um, and good to see Vadim get another goal. I mean, as we talked about earlier in the season, as compared to his previous seasons, production's been down quite a bit. That's his fifth goal of the year. But as you can see now, Mustangs... But he's getting better as the season's going along. Yeah, well, right at the right time, too, if they want to push for a playoff run. I reckon the Perth Thunder, who come here... Well, a lot of the boys will be on the, the plane as we speak right now, coming to Melbourne. Uh, they'll be worried when they see this for the Mustangs tomorrow. It's going to be a crunch game if the, this continues the way it is. So now the eyes have it, but the, the Mustangs swoop on it. They get, virtually just couldn't trap it. Now Hoddick, little drop pass out towards Clark. Gets a shot away. Tom with a save and a great chance for the odds, but they couldn't capitalise. That's their best play so far tonight. Oh, virtually has not really got the express delivery back to the bench. Your shift over, son. McCoy lost it to Clark. Gets a shot from a tight angle. Toivonen had no trouble with that one whatsoever. In the eyes, have a tip there looking for Corbett. He couldn't find it. Lovely set up, and all of a sudden, the Melbourne Ice are finding something offensively. But unfortunately, they're 5 0 down. Uh, it's, yeah, even in their own end, the, the Mustangs look very comfortable. Here's Gavin Birchler getting lit up there by Rob Clark. Nice stiff check. Birchler hasn't seen much ice time this, this season. But a good chance for him getting close to a, a potential run for the finals to get some ice time. Yeah. And just for experience for him as well. He's always been that player that's been around the fringes of the, the Mustang setup. Well, just his third game this season. And uh, we talked about in terms of Melbourne Derby statistics as uh, Lexi Toivon and uh, covers that one. Coming into this game, both the Ice and Mustangs had scored 11 goals each. The Ice had an average of more goals by half a goal. And not that that really means anything right now because it's 5 nothing. But uh, the Mustangs had, con uh, had conceded more goals than the ice coming into this one. So here comes Kalashnikov. Excuse me, that's the other way around. Okay, no, no, over the line now. Okay, who uh, became an Australian permanent resident this year. After, uh, well, he's been in the country six years and marrying an Australian girl and sort of thought what he had to do to get one. Here's okay with a shot again and he scores! Six, nothing, Mustangs. And, well, you could say, you could quite comfortably say at this stage of the game, they have a hand and four fingers on the three points here this evening. Uh, I think they've got the full five fingers. Yeah. I think they've got both hands on this one. And, uh, well, years and years of pain against the Melbourne Ice in these derbies. And they're, they're returning the favour in kind plus some tonight. They, it, that's just far too easy. That was a perfect shot. Oh, it was a lovely eight. shot, yeah. absolutely. But... Stationary uh, defence. And, and you can really hear a pin drop here. No, from the Melbourne Ice well, we have to keep an eye on the crowd, see if they start walking out. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't seen that this harsh season. Harsh call, but I tell you what, it's probably a fair one. <laughs> so now Wong for the ice. Shot was wide. Now Ferguson. I'll try to get past the slot looking there for O'Kane. Now Wong. It's out towards Jeremy Chai. So Wong. He's lined up there by Kalishnikovs. It takes him down and the well, Mustangs should be able to clear and they will. But not for long. Overskating. In fact, in the end, I think that was Armstrong. Stretch pass finds OK and he goes out wide to Dave. He played that well. Got to skate on it. Just glide it down into the corner. Will beat Webster to the puck. The Carpenter. Oh. And we'll got a little bit of action there at the Melbourne Ice bench. A little bit of frustration, I think, is starting to creep in for the ice. Now Humphreys. It was the part of the ice the last year and is probably enjoying this more than anybody else right now. Delsar goes out wide towards Crow. 
crosses the blue line. It's forced out wide along the half wall. Humphrey will get there first in front of his uh, posing number 24, Sam Hoddy. So Humphrey's had time to recover, gets a pass out towards Burke. Shot was too high. Humphreys again. Mustangs players can just raffle this right now as uh, Robertson gets a shot away. And right now, I think the Mustangs defenders have got more shots on net tonight than all the Melbourne Ice. It's now Rob Clark. Leading the race, tight angle shot. Toivonen had no problems with that one and never was. And he's actually been one of the best players on the ice tonight for the Melbourne Ice, Rob Clark. And uh, well, you can see this incident before. Davies, Chris Wong gave him a little shot. And ah, Bernie Mac, a podcast co-host. If the Mustangs and Bears win tonight, the Mustangs will wake up in an AHL final spot. Yes, indeed. That's how crazy this, this season is. Been. And right now, between the Bears and North Stars after the first period, it is 3-3. So... Plenty of action around the league tonight. And, I mean, obviously, the, the North Stars, I mean, the Bears looking to lock down second spot. Position to both JPM and JN at the same time. Oh. And it'll probably go between them. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> That's the way this night's been for the, the Mustangs in the eye so far. I reckon a knuckleball will go between them right now. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, as a nice fan, what are you going to do? It's 6-0 down at, at this stage of the game. So and they also have the Perth Thunder to come on Sunday. We play the Mustangs here tomorrow night at 5, Australian Eastern Standard Time. Bronte shoots pretty comfortably gloved by Toivonen, and he holds on. Declan Bronte, I'd have to say, is in the mix for Rookie of the Season yes. now, this, week, this year. You mentioned Bernie Mac, you do the podcast with him yep. in discussion of Rookie of the Season. What? You forgot Yeah, we, we, we realised as soon as we recorded, like, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Oh, we had to, we couldn't. Uh, Seriously. I wasn't prepared to do another hour and a half of re recording that whole thing. Yeah, Bronte is a serious <laughs> player despite the scoreline tonight. He's a 16 year old kid and plays a game like someone in his early 20s. Yep. So, Powell, little backhander pass. Bronte, the man we're talking about, left it for Corbett, gets a shot away. Pad save. Again, another chance for the ice, but Toyman's looking good tonight, but a well, backhander shot in the end just wide. So, Bronte looking for a tip. So Fleming to Corbett. Takes the puck, gets it back out towards Fleming. Going to the slot. Powell. Well, managed to get some of that, but not enough. Corbett again. Has three, well, two teammates there, pretty much in the same spot, not creating any opportunities for him to pass to. So Kalishnikovs. He'll wait for the trailers to arrive. Send that one into the corner. Birchler will get there first, ahead of Brondi, who won the puck eventually. And did really well. So Declan Bronte, assessing his options. He's nearly turned that over there. Good work by Ferguson. Chris Wong able to clear. Now Bright gets out towards Davies. Davies driving towards the net. Ferguson up against Bronte. Experience one out on that occasion. Now Ferguson again. Back to the point towards Erzin. Shot was blocked and Bronte clears. Looking out towards Armstrong. He'll have to go back. In fact, it's been turned over. It's been onside. Here's a chance for Davies. He's brought down. Loses the puck. And Graham will clear. Now Chris Wong. Goes to the low slot. Just the wrong side there. And that was for Velez. Davies has it. Crosses the blue line. Tries to cut the middle lane. And just a little wide. Still the Mustangs have it. The pass has been turned over. Pass by Davies. He's going to go in the corner. Melbourne Ice will take the chance to make a line change. And Michael McMahon, the Mustangs captain, will skate it out of the zone. Cuts cool. to the middle lane, and it's going to be a penalty against the ice. And uh, not only will Delsar go to the penalty box, he looks like he's earned himself for good measure. Yeah, insult, injury to insult there. It's, uh and it just gets uh, even worse for the Melbourne Ice with the Mustangs. Everything's coming up Millhouse at the moment. There we have a look at the replay here. Michael McMahon, as I talked about at the start, in contention, in my opinion, for a defenseman of the year. He's had a stellar season. He made his debut for the Mighty Roos this year in the Netherlands. And he's just continued that form, much like many of the uh, team that went over the Netherlands. Most 
of note, in my opinion, Anthony Kimlin for the Sydney Bears. One of the main reasons the Sydney Bears are where they are right now. As this puck moved out, oh, stolen here by Powell, walking in, he shoots, good save from Toivonen. And... A rare mistake there from the Mustangs' defence in terms of this game. Almost led to their first goal of the game for the Melbourne Ice. His pal, one of the few bright spots for the Ice tonight. Almost capitalised a two-on-one the other way now. Here's Anderson. Anderson looking for McDowell. Fly to the trailer. Oh, what a save by Mikey James. Denied Sean Jones moving post to post. And that will do it. Great save from Mikey James. And he keeps it at 6-0. But again, there wasn't much defensively happening for the Melbourne Ice and the, the Mustangs picking up again. Anderson probably's only really pinched in a couple of times this season, done it twice tonight. As you see there, James post to post and did enough. But yeah, quite randomly, like the Melbourne Ice defence, the Swiss cheese at the moment. Just, and there's uh, Rod Johns, your mate. <laughs> He's, he'd be enjoying tonight, won't he? He's part of the... Uh, 100-year club. I can't remember what he was called. But no, I'll, like... I'll see you on Sunday, Rod, at, uh, at 6.45 at Oakley for Blackhawks versus Demons as this one now to Ferguson. Slides this one across and covered by Mikey James. And Rod, we just saw on screen there, got um, IHV Ice Hockey Victoria Life membership tonight as well and well-deserved. One of the stalwarts of the Demons and hockey in Victoria and of the Mustangs, of course. So face of attacking zone now for the Mustangs. Still a minute 11 on the power play. So McMahon pass a little too hot there for Burke. Oh, man. In the end, just fanning on that one was Crow. Should have done better. So Burke, he was tied up and Crow will eventually clear. So McMahon. Says his options. Finds Davies. This is the blue line. Finds O'Kane. Okay. Jamie Burke out towards McMahon. He'll go out wide towards Ferguson. Skates in. Burke. Sorry, that's actually O'Kane. Okay. Finds Ferguson. Battle in the corner. So Ferguson. Out yeah, towards O'Kane. Okay. Making the Melbourne Ice power, the penalty kill move. And getting a timely stick on that one was Fleming. So McMahon out, back out towards Ferguson. Crow should get there first. Pass, just able to clear the zone. And now Burke. Burke for the Mustangs, out towards Ferguson. So Ice managed to kill the, pe the penalty. Shot though was wide. Good setup though by Ferguson. Now McMahon. So Apps gets it back out towards McMahon. Stretch pass, looking for Humphreys. Couldn't trap it. No icing call on this one. McMahon will go back, and the Mustangs will look to clear the zone as McMahon gets it back. Pass has been collected by Humphreys. Gets a shot away. Oh, and that is man. a way. Well, there's a big hit as well. Graham and uh, Humphreys. <laughs> now all of a sudden we've got Chris Wong and uh, Apps. Which I think is a little bit of a mismatch, despite the fact that Apps is a, <laughs> oh. is a rookie. And, uh, well, as has been the uh, case just about every season, uh, all season, Mitch Humphrey's helmet comes off. Unfortunately, he doesn't have the, the locks this time, but you just see that hit just off screen. Big hit from Graham. It was there to be yeah, made. Yeah, I, I look at it, and that's, that, that hit was there to be made. And it's a good stiff check there from Todd Graham, if we might be able to get that on the wide shot. But... Uh, and Mitch Humphrey's probably got to do a bit more to um, secure his helmet. He will hurt himself uh, one day with yeah. like <laughs> well, he doesn't have the doesn't have the locks now to make his uh, helmet a little bit uh, less roomy. But uh, good check there from Graham. But it's still 6 nothing. Oh, I think we got a high stick. And looks like uh, Paul Lazzarotto holding his face. And Declan Bronte, no protest from him. Straight to the penalty box. And another power play coming up now here for the Melbourne Mustangs. And... Uh, now, you've got to talk about the Perth Thunder coming in tomorrow night here to play both, obviously, the Mustangs tomorrow night and the Thunder, uh, sorry, the Ice on Sunday. And uh, the Mustangs, well, they have to take the three, really, to stay in contention. Perth Thunder really need to take the six out of this weekend as well. Oh, eh? absolutely. If they've had, they, had, they dropped five points to the Bears two weeks ago. They've had a week off. They're coming in. Uh, obviously, we talked to Rich, Richie Lamb, manager of Thunder, just before the... Uh, broadcast and yet they're they're itching to get back they've got Landon Aslansky back in the lineup 
who was uh, at one stage second in the league for points scored. And that's from a defenseman. He's a big part of the Thunder team and uh, they'll be looking to get going here tomorrow night and they will uh, surely give the Mustangs and the ice uh, everything they've got. Here's Jones, uh, sorry, Vyasov back to Kalashnikovs looking for a shooting lane. Just runs out of real estate, flips it back to the point now. Vyasov just skips over his stick, so he's forced to put it in behind the net. No worries, though, as McDowell's there for the Mustangs. Back to Jones. And now Vyasov, 117 left on the penalty to Bronte, but the puck traverses the blue line, and Kalashnikovs will have to go back to get it. The biggest players we've seen in the league for a while. Here's Jones to Vyasov. Vyasov with a head of steam walking in. Vyasov looking for goal number two. Good save from Michael e. James, and he holds on. James has been good since he conceded that last goal. Um, he's looked really good. Yep. I don't think the Melbourne Ice defence has improved that much, but James is looking pretty solid right now. Yeah, I mean, he's only given up the two, so, but he's made some pivotal saves. And yeah, as you said, the Melbourne Ice defence not doing him any favours right now, or, or indeed since the first period. So face-off one by the Mustangs. Kirk gets it out towards McMahon. Nice pass. Ferguson tried to get to the slot. Pass, though, was blocked. Ferguson along the half wall. Mustang still in possession of the puck. Pass out wide. This is a nice setup. James with the save. Now Armstrong will just clear it out of the zone, send it in the corner, and force Toivonen to come out of his crease. So Ferguson. This breezes past Del Sar, will cut in the middle lane, then go back to the blue line shot. And a tip there by Davies. I'm not sure if James got anything in the end on that one, but uh, that was a beautiful setup by the Melbourne Mustangs. Yeah, particularly that transition coming through the neutral zone there from Brett Ferguson. Basically been his bread and butter all season for the Mustangs. And don't forget the Mustangs hockey. Toyman has played in the last two good old cup finals. That he and has. He has indeed, and now he's... Uh, Hoping to make it three straight appearances. Whether his team still got some work to do to make sure of that as he touches the puck here and lets it go to Erzin, who just gives it here to Robertson. The Mustangs can uh, take their time. Apps now as we get ready to go back to five on five as Bronte has served his penance. Lazzarotto flips this one into the zone. Graham skates onto it, gets the check there from Apps to the applause of the Mustangs faithful who in the minority here this evening, being a Melbourne Ice home game. Here's Crow now with the, the Patrick Kane tongue out. Avoids the check there of Erzin. Manages to get his shot away there to Graham. And Graham's shot is into the netting after a good save from Toyota. And I'm liking this coaching from Max Perrott at the moment. You're starting to see plenty of ice time for the Grant Birchers, the Lazzarottos. Uh, that, that third line, the, team, the, the line that doesn't see too much action, Bradley Apps is another one. Good to see them get plenty of ice time tonight. And you saw that hit. Oh, that's, been a bit uh, of a that's, that's that one. Yeah, you don't like to see that. Very lucky not to get a penalty, I thought. It was Andrew, isn't Well, he got one he shouldn't have got earlier, so we'll yeah, call that we'll, a level. Yeah, we'll, we'll balance it out. So, 34 seconds remaining. Anderson gets the shoulder from Del Sarn, sent to the ice. Biasov prods at the puck, well held there by Graham, though. And he fires it right back in now for the Mustangs to attempt to clear. Bronte pursued there by Vyasov. Clark makes sure of it. And it, uh, well, it didn't really in the end as Graham had to. And he almost runs into the linesman. As the puck goes in deep, Anderson avoids the check there from Clark. It's picked up now by Robertson. Chips it out. Jones uh, in two minds. That's going to be washed out as Bronte has to go back and get it now here for the ice as Vyasov gives him a little bit of a chop to end things. And it is all Mustangs. They have a six-goal lead after two. Well, Mustangs haven't had a game like this against Melbourne Ice since the, the, the day they won the Goodall Cup. And you know, they'd be looking to get a bit of confidence going in the third period, do the big game tomorrow against the Perth Thunder, and a chance to really put the Melbourne Ice to the sword. Indeed. Indeed. Because right now, I'm not sure the Melbourne Ice have got anything. No, so I, they, I don't see it coming looking. from anywhere, to be honest. And I mean, look, you look at the bench, dejected faces. Sort of says it all right now. So we better wrap things up at the end of the second period. The Melbourne Mustangs, well, it's been all Melbourne Mustangs so far. They lead the Melbourne Eyes six goals to nil. Back shortly with a third period of play.
Hi, Andy here. Welcome to Ultimate You. I want to share with you how you could be one of the lucky few to lose 9 kgs or more in six weeks or less absolutely free. Maybe you know someone who's done the challenge before or perhaps you've just seen one of the thousands of before and after photos online. Come and meet us down at the info session where we're going to teach you some mind-blowing stuff and transform their life for good. I'll see you soon. So my name is Renee Hallinan. I'm a Melbourne girl living in, in Adelaide and playing netball for the Adelaide Thunderbirds and have been part of the Australian Netball Diamonds now for five or six years. I've been to two Commonwealth Games and have a silver medal and at the most recent ones a gold medal. Throughout my career one of the things that I've probably had the biggest problems with is sleep and for me falling asleep as an athlete. I'm always critiquing performances, always looking back at the trainings and I have to be a morning person. Um, three mornings a week we're up at 5.30 and, and on the training track by 6am so for me it's about when you do get in there having that quality sleep and I feel like the temper mattress allows me to do that. I, when I was in Tempo, got to try out a lot of the mattresses and went with the original Breeze. One, because it was a bit firmer than some of the other mattresses, but it also contours to your body, which was, to me, incredible that a mattress could do that, but certainly something that could help me. And also my fiance, Jo, is an athlete as well, so when we're in the bed together and not being able to feel one another moving around, certainly have not been disappointed. I'm going to touch wood and say that I haven't had the massive um, knee injuries and things that a lot of netballers have had, but I've had all of the stress injuries, so...
Well, Melbourne Derby here at O'Brien Group Arena, we probably should call it Mustangs Party Night because they currently lead the Melbourne Ice 6-0 and they'll be looking to, to stick extra knives into the wounds, really. Uh, yeah, I don't see a seven-goal third period coming from the Melbourne Ice. Uh, you know, stranger things have happened. and It's not out of the realm of possibility, but uh, pretty close to it. As uh, The Melbourne Ice haven't come out yet. Yeah, I was going to say, the Mustangs, I mean, I haven't seen a, as you talked about earlier, I haven't seen a performance like this since the 2014 good old cup final where it was completely dominant of the Mustangs and uh, you can see uh, the ice haven't even taken to the ice yet but a score update from up in Sydney where the Bears and North Stars after a six goal first period are still tied 3-3 after two and Charlie Adams with a hat trick for the Sydney Bears and as we talked about you talked about um, Kimlin being the key Charlie Adams he's been a hot hand was it um, four goals two goals and um, and a hat trick so yeah. so you got that nearly ten in the foot nine goals in the last uh, three weeks but the Bears as I said this is a game if the Bears win tonight then that means the Melbourne Ice sorry the Mustangs will go to fourth if the Mustangs win obviously which is beyond pretty much a doubt at this stage and if the but if the North Stars win well the Mustangs They'll, they'll go to fifth. I find my maths are correct. I don't have the ladder in front of me. Yes, they'll go to. They will go to fifth. Hold on, let's let's work this out. I should say it before. So if the the, the North Stars win, they'll go to 38, equal with the Thunder. So they'll be fourth. The the Dogs will be fifth, and the Mustangs will be sixth. So really, no room change there. That's all right. Here we go. Got got some stats in front of me. It actually looks that's an outdated table. Nice try, Morgan. <laughs> from start of week 12. <laughs> I may be illiterate, but I'm not illiterate. Uh, but uh, look, in the context of the season, we talked about this is such a crucial weekend. For, well, there we go. There's the right answer. So, <laughs> so the Bears win. They'll go to 48 or 47 to and they'll they'll go to the shootout. Then the Mustangs will go to 36 if they win tonight. And if the North Stars win, they'll go to 38, equal with the Thunder, temporarily anyway. So then the Mustangs, will lead frog, they'll leapfrog the Sydney Ice Dogs into fifth. So, yeah, get your abacuses out for the last two weeks of the season. You may just need them for the, the scoreline in this game. Yeah. Right, it's going. As uh, we're about to get set here. So from the face-off, it's uh, one by the ice. So Graham will flip that one up high. Getting on there first will be Powell. Back out towards Cobbett. Fires, shoots, and a save there by Toivonen. So now Fleming. Ferguson. And the McMahon. Pass finds Davies. Hamilton stick Graham. Looking out towards Corbett. To McCoy. Already one goal tonight. Davies. Out towards O'Kane. Just awkwardly on. Uh, just right in between the, the skates, but now it's Corbett. He's stripped of the puck. Fleming from a tight angle. And the ice have turned over. The Mustangs are able to clear. So Davies just cuts into the middle lane. Forced out wide, but has plenty of support. Hart finds Ferguson. Saved by James. They couldn't get the shot up high. So that was McDowell. Still the Mustangs in control. But Davies. Along the half wall, trying to get out towards Ferguson, and he does. Trying to get back to Davies. Finds McDowell and hits the top of the net. And that's another one. And, well, looks like the Mustangs have brought a truckload of salt and have seen an open wound, and they're going to keep on boring. And I'm sure the salt's coming from the tears of the Melbourne Ice fans right now. 7 nothing. Brendan McDowell with his eighth goal of the season. And, while well, the Mustangs are going to go to 36 points at the conclusion of this game. As we take a look, well, that was the celebration, but uh, Brendan McDowell, top-quality snipe from him. But, again, it was that, that low slot. Yeah. No pressure. Yep. No pressure at all. And uh, the Mustangs just uh, doing it easy here in this third period. Only uh, 90 seconds in. And they have a 7 nothing lead. As this slapped right back in now by Chris Wong. There's the Kalashnikovs who's uh, 
have been great since coming into the uh, Mustangs lineup this season. Four goals from the big man, 14 assists as Apps to the outside. Another uh, promising player for the Mustangs joined this year. As Josh Vellas takes over on the far side, passes that to centre. Bit of miscommunication. Wong goes back to pick up the puck and he gets hammered, but Apps got the worst of it. And he gets a little face wash there from Armstrong and they exchange cross checks and shoves and uh, I think Armstrong says I'm in Danny Glover style I'm too old for this you know what and it retreats to the bench and one thing I like about Brad Apps is he doesn't reputations mean nothing to him yeah I'll give the kid that credit he didn't take on anybody and he's done so all season as uh, Delsar gets met there by Kalashnikovs but uh, the Mustangs well all over the ice here this evening as that pass goes astray going to be icing well what washed out there by the linesman it's a, as Declan Bronte was a judge that he could have played it as this one loose in the corner Hoddick tied up there by Jones Bronte his uh, clearing attempt goes astray Vyasov feeds it back to Jones goes through his wickets and all the way back to the Mustangs defensive zone where the skipper McMahon will pick up here for the Mustangs. We're talking about the schedules coming up for both of these two teams. Obviously, the Perth Thunder will play the Mustangs here tomorrow night at 5 o'clock Australian Eastern Time as Vyasov gets the shoulder there from Graham and then they will meet the ice on Sunday here at 4 o'clock Australian Eastern Time. And this McCoy shot has already got one denied. That one was saved there by James. The Mustangs, they head to Sydney next weekend for the Bears Ice Dogs double. That and last game between the, and the, well, the Dogs and the Mustangs could be a finals decide. Well, it could indeed as Corbett comes back the other way for the ice, just pulls up and has to relinquish the puck. And up now here to Delsa. Leaves this one in now for Corbett. Oh, he goes to the ice and uh, goes hard into the boards. No penalty. Play continues. Anderson trying to dangle his way through. He's had a pretty good game as uh, Anderson tonight. A oh, super game. Fired up ice. Powell couldn't get stick to puck. And a uh, judge touched by the opposite linesman. And Robertson will get it. And also, he should go back to the uh, the Melbourne Ice. Well, they've got the CBR Brave in a double header. But uh, you could say after tonight's performance, their uh, finals campaign with a slim chance already is uh, well over. So we're down essentially to six teams for uh, really three spots. And that's still in the history of this league is. Um Quite a going to be a remarkable finish. There's Five uh, teams for three spots, my maths. Uh, excuse me, let's have a look. Oh, yeah, there's it. Corbett had a... Uh, he, was, he, was, he was robbed there, but... Uh, I, fact, mean, I think it's... It's now been caught, has it? I oh, think... Kane's going to the penalty box now anyway, so the ice will get a power play. Chance for them to get the, the duck off the scoreboard. But it's the Mustangs who win the face-off. To James. Pass that towards Crow, who's over his stick. And now Chris Wong. Into the corner, and while well, he's met heavily there, a big hit. And he seems to be a target at the moment, yeah, Chris Wong. Yeah, I was just going to say, what's he done in a past life to deserve tonight's treatment? So Wong again. Oh, and again. Oh, man. And it looks like the Mustangs are going to look to really um, hammer the ice both on the scoreboard and physically right now. You've got to be careful not to, uh, obviously, this Controlled stage... Controlled aggression yes. would be the key thing for them. Yes, no suspensions at this stage of the season. So shot, and uh, Toivonen makes the save, and there's a little bit of extracurriculars as well. And oh. this could happen when you get a scoreline like this. A bit of frustration comes through, and... Uh, oh. Well, that was Josh Velez, who was yeah. uh, very tempted to drop the gloves on Erzin. Yeah. I think he was setting it up, but... He was, uh, he was trying to suck him in. But yeah, he, got, he wasn't, didn't like the shove after the play. And I know Burke's already got two goals looking for a hat-trick, but in the circumstance, now he's a fiery type of player who can be prone to let his emotions get the better of him. Yep. Would you bench him? Just say, yep. you know, we've got bigger things to worry about. We've got another three games to win. Yeah. Mate, I know we'd love to get the hat-trick, but you know what? We'll keep you out of it. As we have a look, here's the hit. Ferguson on Wong. Yeah, good clean hit. Just a, and a pretty nice single leg there from Chris Wong. But, uh, I mean, it's just insult to injury to insult now. But, uh, yeah, this is the time where you don't want to be uh, personnel down due to suspension going in. I mean, the Ice Dogs have had... Uh, 
been hit by that in the last uh, few weeks. And uh, they've unfortunately been able to, f well, I mean, they haven't been able to fill a full strength side for the last few. And obviously, you know, going up against the Brave four times in the last month doesn't sort of uh, do minders for their chances. However, they're still in the mix, as are the Thunder and North Stars, which is still 3-3 up there in Sydney. So eyes on uh, both, well, I mean, more so eyes, I guess, now in Sydney, given this one is essentially over. As that puck is whipped out of the zone, here's Mikey James. Josh Velez gets that two, as does Erzin. And O'Kane obviously still in the box, so still a power play here to the Melbourne Ice. It'll still a five on four. Corbett moves in, shoots, good save from Toivon, and, and he holds on. But nice move there by Corbett, and uh, he's had a bit of a, he's had a real career year, hasn't he? At yep. age, what, 39? Yeah. Top head. Uh, he's been he's been a real revelation this year. As has uh, Michael Schlamm. The rent, the vets are bringing it back uh, up there in Sydney. He's had uh, the same kind of year as well. Yeah, absolutely. The Schlamm watch isn't just about him talking to the refs at the moment. It's uh, his ability to put the, the puck at the back of the net. So Graham. Now he's one player who's probably had a night he'd rather forget. Pars finds Fleming. It's a good one. Now Powell. Oh, and man. Great chance there for the ice. The setup was beautiful, but in the, in the past, just couldn't find Corbett. And it's good to see Melbourne Ice finally delivering some uh, good hockey. Now Bronte will take the blue line. Thought about the shot himself. Goes to drop pass. Not sure his teammates were expecting that one. Powell forced out wide there. Graham. Great opportunity for the ice, but they couldn't bury the biscuit. So Powell keeps it in. Graham will get there first. So Fleming out towards Powell. Now Burke. He's intercepted by Powell. Go back out towards Sinclair Bronte. Finds Matt Armstrong. So Bronte, nice move. But he's lost the puck, Burke. Burke gets a pass out towards Jones. So Burke, sticking his options. Goes out towards Kalishnikov's over his stick. He'll have to go back and retrieve the puck. Nice thing to make a line change, and Kalishnikov will just hold the puck. Eventually clear it out towards Anderson. He's had one of his best games of the year so far tonight. So Vyasov stops props, gets a shot away. Robertson and Anderson there for the Mustangs. Jones. Up against Hoddick. Nice looking to clear. Haven't been able to clear the zone now, but they, they do. Shoot the puck though was uh, Clark by Jones. Vyasov and Carpenter. Anderson now. And that hits the back netting. And we'll have a face off. But this, that's been the most competitive stretch of play we've seen so far tonight from both sides. And you can see uh, Carpenter and Delsar both had Anderson lined up. The high slot. Looking for a bit of payback, I think, as that shot goes into the netting. But uh, as I said, we talked about we're just a couple of weeks away now from the AIHL finals here at O'Brien Group Arena, September 1st and 2nd, the weekend of. It's the weekend of no AFL here in Melbourne, obviously the week before the final starts. So you can head on over to the AIHL.com and pick up your tickets. There's uh, 12 minutes remaining in and this one. Tonight, I reckon there might be a few Mustangs fans that might just ambitiously buy some tickets. Indeed, I'm sure the CBR Brave fans have already locked theirs in as this one moved out now here to Flemming. Crow now, one-timer and a knuckleball into the netting and we'll have a whistle. But this is a, tonight's game has been that when we you, when we're talking about the Mustangs on paper looking to see I thought they got the best list ever. They're finally actually starting to deliver. To play like it, yeah. yeah. And they if they keep playing this style of hockey we've seen in the past couple of weeks, um, not only can they do it, they'll be a, a genuine threat. And also I think people sort of when Petri Pickinen had to go back to Finland, people thought, oh okay, well it's it's uh, it's gonna go back either they're gonna go backwards again, but no lexington has been good. As this shot shoots and a great save and just as we said, Toivonen with another great save. As Davies gets harassed there. McMahon picks the puck up. 
And it's now with Ben Davies. 11.25 to go. 7-0. No, don't adjust your score. Your televisions. That is the score right now. There's O'Kane. Just uh, got a bit of time and space. Just chips the puck out now here in the neutral zone. Picked up by Davies, who will return to the UK at the conclusion of this AIHL season. Part of that uh, Team GB. Oh, he gets stapled to the glass. And a nice hit there from Devon Crow. As Commonwealth countries collide there. Canada and the UK. Crow now sends it across to Fleming. As uh, Crow, a good save from Toivonen. And we got a penalty coming up as Crow and... Davies had a little bit of a jousting session there at the near side. This is a hit here from Devon Crow on Davies. Just yeah, a nice, light up, didn't he? nice shoulder into the glass. Textbook body check as Davies is the one getting the penalty because he didn't like that treatment, no matter how legal it was. And a power play here for the Melbourne Ice late in the third. It's probably the only worry now for the Mustangs is, um, you know, Team 7 nil down. They've, they've been embarrassed. They probably want to get a bit chirpy, a bit physical, play a bit of rope, up and unleash their frustration. So now the biggest challenge for the Mustangs for mine now is to keep their composure and keep their discipline to make sure that there's no follow-up from this game in terms yep. of suspensions or um, yep. even unnecessary injuries on their part. Yep. Uh, to make sure they're fit and firing for tomorrow's game against the Perth Thunder, which I'm really looking forward to, it should be said, because I reckon that's going to be a great game. Yeah, just discipline and injuries is now at this stage of the season when you're in the, the races that other two... Uh, things you don't want to, to encounter. Particularly when you're the team, one of the teams outside the yep. top four. So yep. tonight they could well be in it. So Graham. Pass to the slot. And nobody's home. Webster. Stretch pass. Finds Armstrong. Traps it. Has to wait for support. Finds Webster again. Gets a bit of space. Gets a shot away. So now Powell. And Graham just off his stick. Has to go back and retrieve it. Armstrong couldn't trap it. So Robertson. Happy to send that one in the corner. Todd Graham. Pass out towards Delsar. Pinch there by McCoy. Go from one corner to the other out towards Troy Robertson. And now Crow for the Melbourne Ice. Just came off his stick. Fleming there in support. Let's get back to the point. And well, they made a bit of a hash out of the ice. Still Crow will get it back. He'll take the blue line himself. Go out wide, out towards Fleming. Fleming gets a shot away. Looking for the tip there for Crow. What an opportunity for the ice. A rare occasion tonight they've left Toivon and exposed. So now Carpenter for the ice. Vyasov. A little chop there from uh, Devin Crow on Ben Davies. Now Crow. So Anderson. Just bumped off the puck, but in fact it's going to be deemed illegal by looks. It's going to be penalty call. Oh, I think that was coming. Crow made a couple of slashes earlier that he got away with. So, I mean, whether this one is correct, uh, pretty much immaterial. It balances out in the grand scheme of things, I'd say. But uh, let's have a look. Oh, so, great angle for this one. In the slow-mo. Oh, uh, that's... No, it's on the stick. Yeah, I see nothing wrong. But you yeah. can say it's a cumulative yeah. effect. Yeah, so I mean... A lot of little slashes. And they, I think the referee's just... He was asked enough. Yeah, he was sort of... He's going for it for the last couple of minutes. But... Nevertheless, I mean, it's not really going to mean much in terms of uh, the ice coming back into this game. There's uh, 8.20 to go. Well, as it stands right now, the Mustangs are in fourth place because the Sydney Bears are now 6-3 up against the Newcastle North Stars. Three goals in the first five minutes of the third period. And the Bears, should that scoreline hold, they will be in guaranteed now of the final spot. Um, their first in 2010. 2010 is their first, yes, and they haven't won the good old cup since 2007. As the Mustangs will be in fourth spot. Yeah, ponder that in the, uh, the eternal enigma that is season 2018 uh, for 24 hours at least. So here's Tommy Powell. Just can't keep that onside. And, oh, touched there by 
Clark that's going to go all the way. And we'll have a Fleming, excuse me, and we'll have a face-off to the right of Mikey James. Well, what you, if you're the Melbourne Ice, looking ahead to, well, in fact, we've got a tweet coming in here. Um, Watch the 2017 AHL final sidelines. Does anyone have a bigger chip on their shoulder than Pat O'Kane? He'll have a point to prove. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, I mean, I I think it, I'm, I was still surprised that he sat last year. But uh, someone had to. McMahon now. But, I mean, yeah, it, uh, it was such a great semi-final too. Is O'Kane okay shoots and a good save from James. It's loose in the slot and slapped out there by Chris Wong. And to even and we'll clean it up now here at the back. 7.30 to go, 104 left on the penalty to number four for the Melbourne Ice. That being Devin Crow is 25 being Michael McMahon. Now here to Davies down the near side. Davies back to Burke. Managed to keep that in between the wickets. As Davies just chips that into the circle. And it's picked up here by the uh, Welsh-born but uh, Team GB rep. Ben Davies, now he's okay and pulls up inside the blue line. Okay, and hits the trailer and Davies just a little too far in front of him, but he gets the puck back nonetheless. Back to the point now here to Ferguson. Ferguson now just buys some real estate, slings it back now here to McMahon. Did well to settle down a bouncing puck and gets it back now here to Ferguson. And Burke lurking there at the back. I love this uh, diamond do the Mustangs. Is that one shot and a blocked? Up there by Carpenter, good effort from him as Chris Wong, who's been in the action all night, does well here on the forecheck, shorthanded, but uh, okay to Burke, that was just behind him. We're going to get a five on five now as Crow rejoins the action at the ex expiration of his penalty. Burke centers to the trailer, looking there for Ferguson, but uh, he's at the end of a shift and just couldn't get the speed up to his uh, usual 100%. Bronte, nice move from him. So intelligent for such a young hockey player as we've seen all season. Here's Tommy Powell down the far side. He's uh, centering pass, and Bronte went looking for the goal. Nearly got it. Well, the opportunity was there, wasn't it? Burke slips this one off the glass, and now here to Todd Graham. 5-5-5 five, five, five remaining here in period number three. Fleming just shovels this one across, and that one's out of reach there of Powell. Back to the point it goes. Graham. Holds the line. It's boosted front and just hit by Fleming's stick. Graham gets it again. Centers and well, almost took Troy Robertson's head off. But uh, still has it on the shoulders. It's moved now here to the high slot. Bronte, nice one-touch pass. But not a very good shot there from Graham. As Corbett keeps it alive now here for the ice. Powell goes to the ice. And the puck slung out and into the netting. Um, was it off the glass? Yes. No. So it's going to be... Uh, Two minutes as Robertson goes to sit. Yeah, for and a delay game. And a late penalty here to the Melbourne Ice. Now looking ahead. Joey Seenberg, yeah. who will turn 40 next week. Well, happy birthday, Joey. But um, looking ahead to Sunday for Melbourne Ice, they're playing Perth Thunder. I think, for mine, personally, I think they've got to play the kids a lot. Yeah, yep. Nathan Kachi, is, haven't seen much of him so far this game. Shy. Um, Christian Pancino sent a few games. Fish Manolo. I think they've got to dress them all if they're available and give them plenty of minutes because... Um, now, now it really is looking ahead to next year. Yeah. See what these kids have got to offer. To me, the only way to do it is getting plenty of ice time. Well, that's uh, has been the talking point this season for the Melbourne Ice going forward. I mean, you've got a core of vets now that are approaching, you know, retirement age. What's the what's the future going to be for the Melbourne Ice over the next uh, three to four seasons when uh, these guys start to uh, hang them up? Oh, for mine, they've got, they've got to play them for the rest of the season, give them good minutes. Yeah, because I don't know. I'm convinced Nathan Kachi is a real deal, long-term prospect. The others, I just don't know yet. I don't think I haven't seen enough of them this year. Get enough opportunities to say one way or the other: Are these players AHL players now yep. or in future? But there's only one way you can find out: play them. So now Armstrong for the guys. One of these veterans we were just talking about the veteran core. Looking at his options. And he'll go back out towards Brondi, another youngster. But Chris Wong thought he copped a high stick there, but no call. The pass out towards Velez. And the Mustangs are going to clear. So Bronte, while fans on his pass, has time to recover. Out towards Corbett, who trapped it well. Going to drive towards the net. I tried one move too many in the end. Fleming 
Pros there in support. Just wide of the net. Great shot, great opportunity. So Pro. And uh, just on the wrong side of the there for Webster. Pretty much summarises the Melbourne Ice's night. So Crow looking out towards Corbett. Lazzarotto couldn't find Jones. The Fleming. Now Powell. He's forced out wide. The Carpenter. Now Webster. <laughs> and you can hear a couple of dejected cheer, Bronx cheers there from the uh, Melbourne Ice crowd. Probably it's from the area around Row I. Row I, I'm sure. The yes. Goons have been particularly quiet tonight. Indeed they have. Particularly <laughs> the five minutes in, I think, was when they uh, the volume went down oh, for mate. a few decibels. Maybe they caught the same food poisoning my si Row I system. <laughs> during the week. That's why they've been a bit quiet. <laughs> but now Clark. He uh, couldn't get a shot away in the end. To Webster. Now Clark. He's been good tonight. And has been one of the real improvers in the Melbourne Ice side this season. To Delsar, well, found an initial uh, pass, gets the puck back. Try to get another pass away. Well, within two minutes of the, the game. One that has been dominated by <laughs> Mustangs tonight. Good job. check on the ref there from Anderson. <laughs> now, winners think they can get away with anything sometimes, <laughs> yeah. can't they? And the refs letting this go on. Eventually, the Mustangs do win out, but only as far as Armstrong he sends it back in the corner. We had the scrum before. To Crow. Here's a chance for the ice. Oh, Great save by Toivon. And on the shot there by Clark. He hasn't had much to do tonight, but he stood up tall when he was protecting the scoreline. I won't mention the S word. Now, yeah, Kachia up against Aps. Two of the rookies. And it's a one in white who wins out. Backhander shot there by Apps was just a little high. Nakachia gets out towards Velez. Chai. Good work there by Crow. Leaves it out for Velez. Got one shot, got a second away. Tobin in with the save. Puck still free. And Lozaretto will go back to the puck. In fact, James comes well out of his crease. And Ferguson now for the Mustangs. So Kalishnikovs. One last chance now for the Mustangs. Put another one on the board. Haven't been able to. Now Corbett for the eyes. will drop pass out towards Bronte. He lost it. Mustangs clear. This should be it. And the Ice will concede some time. They take a 7-0 win over the Melbourne Ice in the final Melbourne Derby. Their finals hopes are alive. For the Melbourne Ice, it looks like they'll be missing the finals for the first time since 2005 in what I'm going to be, have to be harsh and say the most forgettable performance the club has put in in the Docklands era. Well, I'm just going to leave the mic open and you can go on a Jeff style <laughs> monologue uh, if you want. Uh, unfortunately, that's <laughs> that's graphics says it all, really, doesn't it? <laughs> um, the proof's in the pudding. Uh, the, the credit to the Mustangs. I'm going to I'm going to look at the positive and talk about Mustangs. That last period, they probably were playing within themselves. Yep. You got a seven nil lead, lead. That's what you do. But yep. that first period, they played final style hockey. To me, they're, they're a bit of an outsider still to make the finals. Yep. But they should go into the game against Perth Thunder tomorrow full of confidence, knowing they are good enough to do it. They're going to face some pretty good teams. And they got to get, if they do make it, they'll finish probably in fourth. They'll be up against the team, probably the te only team I reckon the CBR Brave are genuinely worried about. Yeah. For some reason, the Mustangs match up with the CBR Brave. Yep. But we better wrap things up here from O'Brien Group Arena 
It, well, congratulations, Mustangs. You were the dominant team tonight. You defeated the Melbourne Eyes seven goals to nil. My name's Michael Clough, my co-commentator Steve White. Well, we'll see you on Sunday for the game against the Perth Thunder.